In this video, I will share a fantastic counter-attacking weapon after pawn to e4, pawn to e5, pawn to d4, we capture, and pawn to c3, the Danish gambit. Instead of capturing and playing into white's hands and letting them have all the fun, we will play the move pawn to d5, the Sorensen defense. I personally believe that this is the strongest option against the Danish Gambit. Uh, I'll be covering the main line first and then all the sidelines. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this video, and let's get started right away. So, pawn to d5, what is actually the point of this move? The point is that because white has not developed anything yet, we have the opportunity to strike in the center right away. We're attacking this pawn and we're opening up our bishop, and the main line here goes as follows. White captures on d5, getting rid of their undefended pawn, we will capture back, and now white captures on d4 with their pawn. Now white here has what is known as an isolated queen pawn, meaning it has no buddy pawns on its uh, on either of its sides to help defend it. So our main plan here will be to attack this pawn, starting with knight to c6. Attacking this pawn like this, um, white will almost always play knight to f3, defend, and now we play bishop to g4. We're pinning the knight to the queen, uh, adding indirect pressure to the d-pawn, so white will almost always play bishop to e2. And I will share in a moment a very rare idea that scores incredibly well for black. Real quick, I just want to say that we do not want to capture an f3, white takes back, and now queen takes on d4, because it kind of looks like we've just won a pawn here, but the answer is that we actually just lose on the spot because of bishop takes on c6. Checking our king, we take back, and now we just lose our queen, and yeah, we're just down a queen here. But the idea here is that in this position, we will play bishop to b4 check. Uh, not too crazy so far, checking the king. White will play knight to c3, but here is where it gets crazy. We will take on f3, white will take back, and now we play the very odd move, queen to c4. And this move might look odd, however, both objectively and... Um, Practically, this move is incredibly good. So, what is the point of putting the queen on c4? First off, we're attacking this knight once again, so they have to do something about that. But also, and probably more importantly, we are preventing white from castling, which is just incredibly annoying. So, white here, or white's best move that they almost always play is bishop takes on c6, checking our king, and we do not want to take of our queen because then uh, white can simply castle, and this is just really bad for us. So instead, we take back of our b-pawn, and once again, you might think, aren't these doubled c-pawns uh, pretty bad? The answer is no. So white has to deal with the fact that they cannot castle right now, so almost everybody here, and it's also the best move, will play queen to e2 check. Checking our king here, as well as attacking our queen, so we are pretty much forced to capture. White will take with their king, they can't take with their knight because it is pinned. So they take with their king, and now we simply play long castles here. And now we have gotten ourselves into an endgame, where according to the engine, it is completely equal. However, practically, this scores incredibly well for black. And our main plans here are very, very simple. This knight, either from e7 or f6, will rotate to the d5 square. And if we can get our knight onto d5, that is the golden square for the knight, and that is just really good. Uh, this other rook will come to the e file, and one important note here, after uh, white plays bishop to e3 defending, you never, and I mean never in these positions, want to take on c3, because after we take and white captures back, now their uh, d pawn that we were putting a lot of pressure onto before has a buddy pawn to help out, and now it is very well defended. So just remember to never trade here, uh, this knight will go to d5, other rook comes to the e file, and we just have a very good endgame here. And remember, the last thing a gambit player wants is an equal endgame. So now let's look at all of the juicy little sidelines now that we have covered the main line. So I'll go back to the beginning. Uh, so, in this position right here, the main line is white capturing on d4. This is the main line, but they also have some sidelines. The first one, uh, most common one, is for white to take on d4, uh, not with their pawn, but with their queen. So, if they do this, then uh, you have a few playable moves, but the one that scores really well is bishop to e6. Uh, defending the pawn like this, 
Uh, if white captures, you can take with the bishop, but I recommend to simply take of the queen. Uh, and after a queen trade here, we get into an endgame that is roughly equal, uh, but we have some pressure on this g2 pawn and this rook, and once again, a gambit player does not want an endgame. That is the last thing that they want. And the other move that they can play here uh, is in this position, instead of trading, knight to f3. These are the two really common moves. And if they play this, then we have a really interesting idea that scores very well, and that is to play knight to f6 here. And this might look a bit odd, because we're attacking the pawn, but white can just push it up. Attack our knight, and this is the most common move. But here we hop our knight into the center with knight to e4 plop our knight into the center, and the idea here that almost everybody falls for is that after bishop to d3, we now have this move bishop to c5, defended by the knight, and we're skewering this queen and the f2 pawn, and they're simply going to lose the pawn here. Uh, they can try queen to a4, it's the only move to save their queen, but we simply back our bishop up, attack the queen, we're going to take the pawn on the next move with uh, whatever piece that you want, and this is just very good for us. So, that is the uh, queen takes on d4 sideline handled. Now let's look at uh, two more. The first one is taking it on d4 uh, with their pawn, and this is if they really want to play gambit. And if they do this, then now we simply take on e4, and we're simply up a pawn here. This is like a gambit, but just not very good. They will play knight to c3, attack the pawn, and we simply defend it with knight to f6. And the move you want to keep in mind here is that no matter what they play, I'll look at bishop to g5 as an example, you want to play bishop to b4. So if they pin you, you want to counter pin them, and they simply just don't have enough compensation after like bishop c4 and castles, they just do not have enough compensation for the pawn. And the other move that they can try here is pawn to f3 in a gambit kind of style, but once again this is just not very good because of bishop to b4. Pinning, white will usually capture the pawn, but this is just bad because we take back, attack this knight twice, and after something like bishop to d2, now we have queen to h4, and this is just completely lost for white because of a pawn to g3, we can capture it with our knight, very nice tactic, attacking the rook, and if they take back, you can take the rook, or even taking on g3, and this position is actually mate in free. So playing pawn to f3 is also very bad. This uh, this um, sideline just isn't very challenging. And the last sideline that they have that is not very special is pawn to e5 here. Uh, I don't fully understand this move, but it is very common, and it, it, honestly, it's just not very good. We take on c3 here, white will take back, and now we simply play pawn to c6. We defend the pawn, and we're simply just up an entire pawn here, and white has, like, literally no compensation. So those are all the main sidelines in uh, this position right here, but now let's look at the other position after takes, and now queen takes on d4. This is where the last sidelines will be. So the main move here is capturing like this, but what if they take with their queen? Queen takes on d4. If they do this, then this is just not very good, because after takes takes, we just get an endgame where we are slightly better due to the fact that white has an isolated queen pawn. And we can already get a better position after like knight to c6 attacking, uh, knight of free, and bishop to g4 attacking the knight. White has to play like bishop to e3 to defend, and we can simply take on f3, damage their pawn structure, and after uh, long castles, we are already much better here. Due to the fact that their pawn structure is really messed up, and we're actually just going to completely win this d-pawn here. So taking on d4 if the queen is no good, but now let's look at their last sideline, which actually is pretty good, and that is in this position to play knight to f3. Taking advantage of the fact that we cannot capture because then we lose our queen, that, that's not very good. So instead here we play bishop to g4, and we play very similarly to the main line. And after uh, bishop to e2 and knight to c6, if white captures on d4 here with their pawn, we actually just play bishop to b4 and we have completely transposed into the main line. And if they do not go into the main line, instead they play like castles here, then after triple castles, we are just better because we're going to be up a pawn because we're still up a pawn in this position, but now we have the option to capture because our queen is now defended by our rook. So that is the Sorrents in defense against the Danish Gambit. Thank you so much for watching, like, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day.